Hello guys, this is Reese from Barmerito St. Peter's Volkswagen in St. Louis. Today I'm bringing you a 2024 Volkswagen Atlas SEL 4Motion Turbo. This particular one is opal white pearl effect on the exterior with French rose leatherette interior. It features keyless entry on four doors, LED running lights, LED headlights, an, LED, uh, an illuminated front logo right there, an LED light bar across the top here, that much more aggressive looking front end there. Silver roof rails, silver window surrounds, 20 inch machine black and silver alloy wheels, a nice bowl line down the side out of the wheel arches, under the door handles, into the wheel arch in the back, and into the tail lights. Dual full exhaust tips on the back here. This one has a bumper dillo protection plate on the bumper, bumper sill right here. It says Atlas right beneath the illuminated logo on the rear. Also an LED light strip across the back and the tail lights there. There's a 5,000 pound tow hitch with a seven pin adapter included down there. Oversized reflector at the base of the car there. That is a power lift gate with the easy open hatch. Let's take a look at the inside. As we open it up here, here's a look at the door inset here. This uh, dark brown wood grain pattern right here on the door panel, right around the door handles here. You have French roast for the leatherette material right here. And then you also have perforated leatherette down here. It's also French roast, separated by a single contrast stitch there. Another contrast stitch down here on the arm pad, the black leatherette arm pad here. You also have bottle and cup storage down here in the door panel. Uh, you do have silver tips on the window switches and power folding or power and heated mirrors here. They're not power folding. I almost said that wrong. Power lift gate right here. There's the button to lift up on that guy to do uh, contactless pickup. You just lift up on the handle and hold and that will close that hatch as well. And the key, key is to make sure you hold it till it's done. Stainless steel scuff plate right here. Three seat memory here. You also have a power lumbar right here, forward and back, and then uh, up and down this handle with this one. Seat back adjust here. Double contrast stitch down the edge of this leather seat here, French roast color as well. And it's a heated and ventilated seat. The double contrast stitch goes up the bolsters just behind the shoulders here. And then there's also a manually adjusted headrest up here with a trimmed out in black right here on the button with a double contrast stitch as well. On the arm pad here, black leatherette here, double contrast stitch there. This particular unit has captain's chairs, so you have a six-seater option here. The seats there, the French roast is that dark brown color, kind of like a co coffee roast color there with black arm armrests. Uh, those are adjustable, the little buttons there will squeeze to fold them down and back. As we go ahead and climb in here, that wood grain interior that continues from the door panel here across behind the 12-inch screen here goes over to the other side over there as well. You do also have a flat bottom leather wrap steering wheel here with the splash of piano black down here, flat silver sp finish on the spokes here. Uh, this is a telescoping steering wheel. I can pull out, push in, raise it, lower it, lock it, set it where I need, and then lock it back. I also have paddle shifters on the two outboard seats right, or uh, <laughs> the two sides here. Um, turn signal stock right here. There's a button on the tip here to bring up your uh, safety or assist systems. Just pushing that button there brings up this menu here. I have lane assist, adaptive cruise control, regular cruise control, side assist, rear traffic alert, and then front assist. I can actually close it out right here too by arrowing down and hitting OK. My buttons over here, arrow down is what I refer to here, up and down or there, and then the tabs to left and right so you can actually play with things on the screen here. We'll get back to that in a second here. This screen is set up here to digital cockpit with multiple screens here. So right now I have this main screen here. I can arrow down with that screen uh, on that particular screen and change it to speed, driving data, navigation, or actually leave it blank. So there's date and time as well. There's also multiple views here by hitting my thumb on this view button right here. I can actually change between that screen there, this navigation screen, where the down arrow or the up arrow allow me to zoom in or zoom out on the navigation behind the steering wheel here. I also have this view here with the adaptive cruise control. It actually shows an animation of other vehicles on the road and lane markings. That's pretty cool. And then you also have speed. And then you have this guy right here again. Uh, now, tabs here, I can change what's displayed in these by hitting the left tab or the right tab. The left tab allows me to change between gear display, fuel tank display, assist systems, 
uh, operating temperatures, um, and then uh, no display, fuel economy, average economy, gear and speed. Uh, and you know what, when I go back here, if I see that little arrow off to the left pointing, it means I can tab again and change it to since start, since refuel, reset, or go back. So I'm gonna just go back here. There's average fuel economy there. Actually, I wanna put the gear display there. I'm gonna put that back so it shows I'm in park. The right side works very much the same here, just the right tab instead. So I can tab over to the right. I can do speed, time, acceleration, compass, um, destination info, uh, settings with no display, time and distance, average speed, navigation, uh, and audio. I personally like audio on mine, so it shows up there. Over here on the infotainment screen, this is the big change here, a huge change. No knobs or buttons here, just the touch screen here. You have gesture control on this guy too. So when you see this split screen right here, you can actually swipe across once. That's gonna do the menu right there. I can swipe back this way, bring that split screen up, or I can further split the screen with this swipe and get this multi multiple tile screen here. Either screen though, I'll go back to this one. This is the main one. I can auto shut off the auto start stop uh, so I can disable that so it doesn't shut off at red lights or stop signs. You do also get climate control down here in the left corner, smart climate, where I can actually do the, rear, uh, the frost here so I can defrost my windshield quickly, warm feet, warm hands, cool feet, fresh air, quick cooling. I can also speak to it. Hello, Volkswagen. My feet are cold. Okay, warming your feet in the front. And it's warming your feet in the front. I'm gonna go back to this and disable that though because it is actually 68 degrees out. My feet aren't cold. So I'm gonna hit this guy right here, go back, and I'm gonna turn that off. Okay, so I have cool feet as well there. But classic climate is probably what most people are looking for or going to use. Here's your vent settings here, your recirculated air, max AC, and then also you just tap here to wake it up and you can slide your finger across here to adjust your fan speed rear climate control you can actually adjust as well fan speed there same deal raise and lower that fan speed or i can turn the rear off uh, i'm not going to do that but i'm actually going to turn the fan down a little bit here and i can adjust my temperature there and just tap rear to go back to the front it's a dual zone climate uh, zone up front or climate control i should say and i can sync them now they're synced i also have heated and ventilated seats on both driver and passenger side here. They start on high, then medium, then low, then off, and you tap another time to actually go down one and then turn it off, just like that. So now, standard is heated and ventilated seats on all Atlases, regardless of trim. Uh, heated steering wheel is also standard on those, so we'll have that. Um, air care is the air filtration system where it actually filters the air before it circulates in the cabin. So by touching this little oval right here, there's a blue line that shows up right there, It'll start expanding and showing the progress of the air filtration system before it circulates in the cabin. So stinky, nasty air outside um, won't circulate in the cabin. Cigarette smoke, skunks, roadkill, stinky landfills, anything that you smell outside, before it circulates in the car, it will actually scrub the air. So I can actually X out of that as well. I have my map here, my navigation map here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the shifter here. Reverse. Neutral, drive and sport are all handled on the shifter here. It's a little nub right here. And park is handled with this button here. Start and stop is just above that. And occasionally you might actually accidentally hit the start stop button instead of the park button. It's okay, the car automatically goes in the park when you start when you hit the start stop button. So it's gonna be in park regardless. Um, but the park button is probably, gives you a little more peace of mind. There's wireless charging right here. USB-C's over here to the right that are also backlit so you can see them at night and you just push that drawer that button again and it closes the drawer On this shifter push up with my foot on the brake It chimes like an Audi shows the R illuminated in yellow and then you have this backup screen right here Animation off to the side for tire swing or wheel swing right here So you know if you're about to side swipe a trash can while backing out Same on this side here. You're gonna trade paint with the garage door you don't want to do that when backing out. So you have this to help aid. The trajectory steering on that side there, the yellow line moves accordingly to the left or the right, depending on which way you turn the wheel. The green line signifies straight back and the red line signifies where your bumper is and also where your rear hatch is. To put it in park, you just push this button again and it's back in park.
there is a speaker up here now instead of the storage bin that was in the older atlases up here above home link mirror here auto dimming home link mirror with three-door garage door memory and a digital compass over here bluetooth button here for pairing with your home automation stuff through home link uh, you'll get a free subscription for four years with that vanity mirror on each side with an led light above on each side you do also have capacitive touch for your dome lights up here so a tap right here turns on the dome lights a tap again turns them off just like that you also have two swipes here one for the sunshade off to the right and the other for the sunroof by tapping here or touching here deliberately and swiping back whoops didn't do it there goes the sunshade capacitive touch is a different animal so you have to learn to touch that hides or takes the sunshade back so it's not hiding the sunroof anymore and then a deliberate touch and swipe back for the sunroof that section stacks on top of that one back there it tilts up and slides back pop-up windscreen right here you do also get uh, capacitive touch for your dome lights here and dome light on off set up here so if you don't want your dome light to come on when you unlock or um, open the door to get in the car you hit off here it's gonna illuminate yellow so your dome lights will be off this also turns on the dome lights here so that's your quick turn on that turns that off and this turns both dome lights off the I is for information the wrench is for roadside assistance and the back here the SOS is for emergency services your speakers are all right here so when you're speaking on a call you can speak naturally I still haven't figured that out I still tend to shout on a call I don't know why but I do but uh, that's how that's set up there for you and to swipe the close the sunroof touch and swipe forward touch and swipe forward for the sunshade as well and here they both come all right over here on this side here it's not going to show up right now because it's still daylight out but it says atlas here backlit you also get ambient lighting here so to show you what ambient lighting looks like i'm going to go to vehicle here vehicle vehicle interior ambient lighting it's already defaulted to purple i can see that because it's purple here and purple over here and that purple will also show through down here across here you can kind of see it right there on camera and it goes into all four doors and it's not going to show up that well on camera not because it's daylight outside so i have ambient lighting on i have automatic color turned off if i turn on automatic color it defaults to red white or blue um so or actually it's going to be probably red or blue not red white or blue um but turning it off gives me this color map right here and I can just adjust here. There's pink, there's purple, there's blue, there's green, yellow, orange, red. I'm always partial to purple, so I select purple. Also, um, all of your buttons here are going to be purple in your tiles and then also over here. Um, down here, these buttons, assist systems, do the same thing that I did on a turn signal stock. Just gives you a different looking screen here. You can hit right here and you can adjust more things here. Dynamic road design display, you can bring it up turn it on or off or turn on speed alert I don't I don't advise that especially if you're a speeder don't do the speed alert because it's just gonna chirp at you endlessly and you don't want that you won't like that emergency assist I can turn it on and off emergency braking you can turn it on and off however I don't recommend that because then you're gonna have an endless chime telling you that emergency assist is off or front assist is inactive and that's gonna annoy you gloss black finish up here Okay, the storage or the uh, bottle and cups to, or cup holders, I should say, are stadium seat style cup holders. This one's a little taller than this one here. Um, so your lids aren't battling for supremacy on a drive home from the from the fast food restaurant or the drive through. Right here, your key fob. It's kind of clunky, but it's big and you're not going to lose it easily. Unlock here, trunk release here or hatch, lock up there, remote start, and then your panic alarm right there. On the back, it has the Volkswagen logo there. There's storage right here. Now, storage below. Because this shifter is a shift-by-wire shifter, so it, it re frees up all the mechanisms that were typically down here before. So now, there's actually storage down here, and there's actually a little icon there to set your key on if your key fob battery dies. So that way, you're still able to start the car. In the armrest here, there are USB-C there's a USB-C connection right here that's backlit so you can see it at night so that's one there's two right here that are also backlit so you can see it at night there's a third one or fourth one up here for a dash cam on the side of the mirror over here in the glove box 
There's your manuals right there, tire warranty underneath that in the Ziploc bag. Also, you can see the bottle and cup storage over here in the door panel. This seat is actually power as well. So you will have two buttons on the side over here, one for forward and back and up and down, and the other for your seat back adjust there. If you don't care about having a power seat for passenger, the SE Tech would be a good buy. This one comes in at $52,194. Extras on this one include $395 for the, the pure white, I'm sorry, the opal white pearl exterior, $695 for captain's chairs, $405 for the auto dimming home link mirror, $346 for monster mats, $275 for a third year prepaid maintenance, $173 for the bumper dealer protection plate, $110 for a luggage net, $13.50 for destination brings you to $52,194. Back here in the back. Now I will say one thing. As these cars get later into the year, destination charge change from $13.50 to $14.25. So there may you may see some out there with a $14.25 destination charge. That's absolutely normal. They had a price increase and it was on the destination. There's your sunshade right there. It just stores down in the door there and it goes up here and latches in. More wood grain or interior right here around the door panel or door handle and then you have leatherette up here that's pure roast or uh, sorry french roast and perforated leatherette down here that's french roast separated by a contrast stitch as well and then black leatherette down here with a contrast stitch and then three compartments here for storage and there's a little storage inside the handle here here's a look at the seat here this seat this handle here pitches the seat forward it's a captain's chair so the seat will drip down scoot forward and you have access to the third row here. Those headrests flick up with the flick of a wrist right there, and you can get a six foot three, six foot four person back there easily. Seats sit high off the floor, so their knees are not in their chest, uh, and they're more perpendicular when sitting back here, so adults will still be comfortable back here. Trace of black leatherette right down the middle here, and the, on the edge of the seats, these two seats are gonna be leatherette. Everything else in the car is gonna be leather. This handle here also doubles as the way to push it back. You lift up the opposite direction, lock the seat in place. There's a bar underneath to lift up, squeeze, and move the seat back. This seat is leather. It's also heated. Same with that one over there. Armrests fold down or fold up out of the way with a little button right here on the side that adjusts to where the armrest stops. So you can adjust it where you want. So you have that there. Also, car seat hookups. Are right inside here there's a little metal loop in there that you'll feel for right there on each side for clips you have them there as well each of these seats has a top tether on the back and the two rear seats will also have a top tether at the base of the seat as you climb in here lots of leg room here i'm wearing boring socks today they're kind of like beetlejuice type socks pocket here and pocket over here you have vents right here in the middle and then you have your heated seat buttons for both both the outboard seats here uh, if you get a bench seat, the middle seat is the only seat that won't be heated, but it will be uh, also leatherette padded instead of leather. Um, down below here, two more USB-Cs that are backlit and a three-prong plug-in down there as well. There's a look at the armrest up to the front instrument cluster there. We'll go ahead and shut this door here. Again, lots of leg room here, lots of head room as well. Um, I'm nice and comfortable back here, and I've got easily, you open the door again so you can see this here, easily four to five inches of knee space behind the seat. And then that can just adjust by moving forward or moving back. So you have that and I can also recline the seat as well. Let's take a look at the rear hatch. There's a look at your wheels right there. As we come around to the back here, right between the T and the L is the switch to open the hatch. Power lift gate there. And here's a look through to the front. Panoramic sunroof up there, instrument cluster. You'll notice the black padding on the back of the seats are carpeted uh, back to the seats here. Those are steel plates behind those that protect your passengers, your occupants from debris, or not debris, but cargo in the back in the event of an accident. The steel plate stops things back, items that are stored back here for cargo from penetrating the seat or injuring people in those seats. The headrests flick up, like I said, with a flick of a wrist there, and then they fold flat. And then there's a lever here to fold the seats flat flat area here those two seats will also fold flat leaving an opening in the center there C pillar vents off to the left and to the right on each side there you have a seat belt clip as well and then a 12 volt charger port right there two USB C's back here for a total of eight storage bin here cup holders there cup holders over here another storage bin recessed trunk light that's LED on each side and a bag hook off to the right 
you also have um, the tie downs for a luggage net here and also over here and down below as well there's a look at the cargo blocks there monster mats the front license plate on this one here we kept it off the car just in case they, it's not required we do a lot of out-of-state sales as well there's your luggage net right there underneath this floor here carpet or cargo protection system here I lift up the spares underneath the floor here there's a storage tray right there carpeted storage tray you just unscrew that guy right there and pull out the tray and your spare is underneath jack apparatus is off to the side this car will come with a four-year 50,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty on it from Volkswagen that's four years 50,000 miles and include three years of included maintenance on this particular model also if you buy from me at Bomberito St. Peter's I'm going to give you a, an additional three years of free maintenance so your 10 20 30 40 50 and 60,000 mile oil changes are all covered also, if you buy from me at Bomberito St. Peter's, remember you can fly in and drive out. I'll pick you up at the airport. I'm going to give you a 10-year, 200,000-mile nationwide engine and powertrain warranty free of charge. 10 years, 200,000 miles nationwide engine and powertrain warranty free of charge. As you can hear a jet in the background, we're right under the flight path for Lambert International Airport. He's up there, Southwest flight leaving. It's windy today, so he's taking off in an opposite direction. So. If you're interested in this car, give me a call, 636-290-4257. TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, resells cars. Thanks a lot, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a great day.